And this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there. Everyone, welcome to That Space Show, episode 10. We're going to be covering the dates April 22nd through April 24th. And without further ado, I'm your host as always, Nick. Bruh, 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 thank, bruh, you guys, bruh. thank you guys. And without further ado, let's just get straight into the comments that I've received over the past videos. And now we have a comment from Indigo9. Indigo9 says, Curiosity Rover found Martians? And I have her on my channel straight out of Soul 1065. I'm not sure how true everything is with that, but I mean, there might be Martian, so I guess check it out. I don't know. And another comment coming in from Bino No G. Bino No G says, great content, keep it up. Thank you, Bino No G. Thank you so much. And from C Meigs, he says, first, thank you for the first comment, C Meigs. And I um, I pinned this comment actually because we have a comment from William Perkley, forty nine fifty two, who says, "What the Bruh. hell is this? Justin Beaver goes to space. WTF? Rolling on the floor emoji, laughing emoji, rolling on the floor emoji. Justin Beaver. Seriously." Yes, I see the resemblance. I mean, I, okay, I, I guess I'll be Justin Bieber. Welcome to the new show, Justin Bieber Goes to Space. And let's get straight into the launches. And now we're going to have the Falcon 9 Block 5, Worldview Legion 1 and 2. That's going to be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time Zone today, actually Wednesday. And we're going to have the Long March 2FG. Shenzhou 18, and that's going to be Thursday, which is going to be tomorrow, April 25th, 2024, of course, in 8.59 a.m. Eastern Time Zone, so that's honestly not a bad time. And now, without further ado, we didn't have any astronomy, so let's go straight into Justin Bieber Goes to Space Show, segment one. Welcome to Astrobiology and Astrophysics. Let's get straight into it. Researchers have detected a new molecule in space. Recently at MIT, researchers have found a new molecule in space. This molecule is called 2-methoxethanol and was found using radio telescopes like ALMA. The special thing about this molecule is actually how big it is. 13 atoms big. The formula for this is CH3OCH2CH2OH. And this helps us get insights into chemical processes in space and how organic molecules form in space. They found this star forming region of NGC 6334L, but not in another near region, which helps to understand how these different regions of where the stars forms could have different conditions for which molecules can form in one and the other. This discovery helps scientists understand how molecules form in space, and especially the fact that this molecule is much bigger than most others that are seen casually in space. And now, let's talk about Venus. Stephen Kane, who is an astrophysicist from UC Riverside, highlights Venus as a reference point for the limitations of habitability. Venus and Earth share some similarities in its mass and radius, but the solar energy that Venus receives is way more than Earth, as you see, it's not a desolate wasteland of heat. This increase of solar energy contributes to Venus's harsh environment that contains hot temperatures and sulfuric acid clouds. The two differences that we also see is the planets com compared to Earth and Venus. Venus does not have a moon, which on our Earth, the moon contributes to the tidal waves and axial tilt and so much more. Though we still not really know much regarding the internal structure of Venus either, which it does make knowing how it came about and evolved very hard. NASA has planned, though, upcoming missions which is named Da Vinci, and Veritas, which is F-E-R-I-T-A-S. These will provide valuable data about Venus's atmosphere and surface features. This will teach them about the past conditions, which will help us better understand habitability and limitations on that, and what makes a planet truly habitable. And Mars now? 
NASA scientists have new ideas. About what? Well, the Curiosity rover on Mars has made an interesting discovery. That being, methane gas is leaking from the surface of the Gale Crater on Mars. This was confusing because usually methane is produced by living creatures here on Earth, and there's no real evidence of ancient life on Mars. Even more interesting is that the methane seems to disappear and spike at random times, which surprisingly do not build up in its atmosphere at all. Scientists who explain this have suggested that maybe the methane could be trapped under salt layers and the heat causes it to leak and seals being broken. And another suggests that maybe the ro rover's vibrations could be causing this leak to happen. Scientists are now performing tests to see how this could actually occur and where this methane actually comes from. And maybe there could be ancient life, but no theories suggesting that have been made yet. So let's get straight into the next. Welcome to space discoveries. Let's get into it. And now a team of international researchers recently made a discovery about the NGC 4383 galaxy, which is located in the Virgo cluster. They found that a massive gas outflow extended across the galaxy and it was estimated at 20,000 light years wide. Dr. Adam Watts explained that the outflow is because of the powerful explosions from the stars in the galaxy's central regions. These explosions eject lots of hydrogen and other heavy elements. This massive pollution is equivalent to more than 50 million suns. These can actually play a role in the formation of stars as these elements can make star forming regions. This occurred due to one star reaching the end of its life and then another and then another until it built up into this giant huge observable outflow. That is very cool. And now, recently astronomers from the Australia Telescope National Facility have discovered a new type of pulsar star, the millisecond pulsar star, MSP, in a region known as the Snake. Pulsars, again, are dense neutron stars that eject beams of electromagnetic radiation. Millisecond pulsars are the fastest spinning type of star, with rotation periods less than 30 milliseconds. This was found in the snake area of the galaxy, which of course is an area in the middle of the Milky Way where lots of gas and dust clouds collect. These can be detected, of course, as they emit radio waves due to the composition of certain clouds. To make it even cooler, this star is in a binary system. The other star in the binary system is not the same type of pulsar, but this is a very interesting discovery in a binary system. Scientists think that this pulsar might be making a bright spot of radio waves in space. And they've named this wave G359.1342-0.0 2000. This discovery is important because it helps us learn about what's happening in the center of our galaxy. But of course, scientists need to keep looking to find even more pulsars like this one to learn even more about all the pulsar types out there. I mean, pulsar starts are super cool. And I think it's EO or IO. I don't think anyone can really decide, but we talked about it actually in our last video. So recently, NASA's Juno spacecraft got close to Jupiter's moon EO or IO, only 930 miles away from its surface. Not only volcanic activity was sensed, but a visual animation of IO's largest lava lake named Wilkie Petria was made. The surface appeared also like volcanic glass you see here on Earth. As we discussed previously, these volcanoes have formed due to tidal heating because of the gravity and the orbital renaissance from Jupiter's other moons such as Europa and Ganymede. Io has been taking great leaps recently in discovering it, and it's great to see. And now on to the final story. Recently, a study presented new evidence for Planet Nine which is, of course, the hypothetical planet beyond the orbit of Neptune, has been proposed in 2015, of course, and researchers have been gathering evidence for it since its existence. And in the study, they found that the movement of distant objects that cross Neptune's orbit seem to be irregular. They say that this is because of the gravitational influence of a large distance planet, yet simulations could not really pinpoint where this large distant planet really was. But there's a big relief right now, belief that this team thinks that there is indeed a planet nine. I mean, how cool would it be to have another planet? I mean, I think it should be Pluto, but I mean, I guess we can't discriminate. So I'll keep you updated 
if we find anything about Planet Nine. And on to space tech. <laughs> Welcome to Space Tech. I mean, I didn't find a lot of articles on Space Tech, so I'm happy with what I found, at least. So let's get straight into it. And now, our first story. A computer model helps support the theory of asteroid... Sorry if I butchered this. Kamalawea. As an ejective from the moon. This study explores the near-Earth asteroid, which is Kamalawea, which was discovered in 2016. This asteroid or orbits the sun in sync with the Earth's orbit. This asteroid is said to be about 40 to 100 meters wide, and it rotates actually pretty fast. The team developed a computer model simulating collision that could have flung moon surface debris into space forming this asteroid. So they ran the simulations to see if maybe this asteroid was formed based off the moon being in a collision with something. They focused on the Giorando Bruno Mark crater, on the moon, which aligned in terms of uh, its composition and so much more. And this suggests that this asteroid could just be a collision piece of this crater. So very cool that one of the asteroids we have in our orbit is actually one from the moon. A moon collision at that. And now we're next. Recently, India has announced a breakthrough in space debris management. They have successfully minimized debris from its satellite missions, which was done by ensuring that the spent rocket stages safely re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. India aims to deorbit its spacecraft as well, which will be great. Last year they deorbited 13 satellites. While there were issues with an incomplete burn-up and some of the debris survived to the surface, which caused some issues with people almost getting hurt, but India is heading in the right direction as the concern all about the space junk has been growing. I think they're making the right decision. So that's gonna wrap it up. Let's go into the. <laughs> Welcome to the last segment, space exploration. I think there was actually some pretty good articles I found. So let's get honestly straight into it. And finally, the European Space Agency has graduated a new group of astronauts from basic training. Now, over the past year, they underwent physical and academic preparation. These new astronauts, which consisted of five Europeans and one Australian, were selected from a pool of over 22,000 people. This included people from very diverse backgrounds, such as science and medicine and all that. And in terms of all the countries, I think it was pretty diverse, as I'll read off later. These astronauts, they performed extreme oxygen tests, and they learned Russian, and as they do all that, they do form a tight bond with their group. And I'm excited for the new age of the European Space Agency, new astronauts. And here are all the new astronauts. Sophie Adnot from France. Now, she was a French Air Force helicopter test pilot. Pablo Alvarez Fernandez from Spain. He was a Spanish aeronautical engineer. Rosemary Coogan from Britain, a British astronomer. Ralphie Ligos from Belgium. Belgian biomedical engineer and neuroscientist, Marco Allen Sabir from Switzerland, Swiss emergency physician, and Catherine Benopeg from Australia, an Australian astronaut candidate, which under a corporation cooperation agreement between Australia and the European Space Agency, they were able to make it happen. Very excited for them. And who remembers all the stories about Voyager 1? basically not being able to communicate anymore. Finally, after many months of Voyager 1 not communicating correctly, it has finally been able to be sending back useful information and usable information about its status and health. The engineering team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory had to troubleshoot a malfunctioning chip in the space flight, spacecraft's flight data subsystem, which affected the storage of critical software code. They relocated and adjusted the affected code sections across the spacecraft's memory. And now, for the first time in five months, Voyager 1 is back in action. Finally, I mean, it's been a while. I was a little bit scared that maybe they wouldn't be able to get it back, but here we are, and it's all back 100%. And now, the University of Surrey recently conducted a study on how microgravity could affect sleep and biological rhythms. Microgravity, of course, is basically when you seem weightless, but there's still a small amount of the Earth's pull on you. 
basically what astronauts feel on the ISS. <clears throat> they feel weightless because of the lower amount of gravity and they're in low Earth orbit. Now, 20 men underwent a 90-day test simulating microgravity conditions. This had a bed rest at about a 6 degree head down tilt angle. The researchers measured things such as wrist skin temperature, motor activity, light exposure, and sleepiness. They found a decreased rhythmicity in temperature, activity, and sleepiness during bed rest, with participants sleeping less than 6.5 hours per average on nights. This could arise certain implications for very long-term space flights, but it teaches us a lot how we can maybe fight these conditions and how it really works and how the body responds to space conditions. And I thought that was a very interesting story. And that's going to wrap it. And now, I'd like to thank everyone for watching today. And if you haven't already, I suggest hitting that subscribe bell as, I mean, we're uploading three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I mean, if you love space news, you can check it out. I mean, I think we're getting a good amount of space news and very interesting articles. And if anything wasn't covered, I'll put all the links to the newest news in the description. But without further ado, thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, be bold, be original, be invincible.